hello everybody. I'm uh, happy to, uh, to present uh, the overview of the emotional impact uh, of movie Tosk. Um, the main goal here is to uh, predict the emotion uh, people will feel when uh, watching movies. Um, so there are several ways to uh, represent emotions. Uh, the discrete representation, which is considering uh, emotions as uh, categories like uh, fear, uh, surprise, uh, happiness, for example. And there is also uh, another way to represent emotion. We see the dimensional one, where uh, we consider dimensions like uh, valence and arousal, which are the two uh, most used uh, dimensions for, uh, for emotions. So valence is a dimension uh, representing emotion from the most negative to the most positive ones, and uh, arousal to the most passive to the most active ones. So we can uh, represent emotions uh, in this two, uh, two dimensional space. And uh, for example, uh, happiness is, uh, is uh, very positive and active, whereas uh, sadness is uh, negative and passive. So in our task, we have considered these two uh, types of representation. So it's not a, a new one. Uh, it's an evolution of uh, tasks that have been proposed uh, several years before, starting for, uh, with violence, then affect, and finally uh, uh, emotions. So predicting the emotion people will feel when watching movies has, uh, has uh, a lot of um, possible uh, applications, like recommendation, for example, and also uh, protecting children from uh, potential harmful content, which is the one, um, one of the goals we, we, uh, we follow here. So the goal for, for our task is uh, to predict, as we said previously, the emotion uh, people will feel. So it's very different from the emotion we can uh, see in movies, for example, uh, thanks to uh, fac facial expression recognition. Here, it's uh, the emotion we will feel when watching movies. Uh, so we consider the expected emotion. The expected emotion is uh, the emotion uh, the majority of an audience will feel when watching uh, video content, which is different from the induced emotion. Induced emotion is uh, for a particular people. So induced emotion is uh, subjective, whereas um, expected emotion is more objective. So that's why we are trying to recognize here. And we are trying to recognize valence, arousal, and also fear. So um, uh, considering the dimensional representation, but also the discrete representation. So we consider long movies, it's not short movies, but long movies, from several minutes to, uh, to one hour and a uh, and half uh, minutes, and uh, 30 minutes, sorry. We have two subtasks. The first one is uh, predicting valence and arousal values along movies, so uh, predicting these scores of valence and arousal every second. And the second subtask is fear detection, where here we want to, uh, to predict the beginning and ending times of sequence in the movies inducing fear. And the target use case here is the prediction of threatening scenes to help systems protecting uh, children from potentially uh, harmful content. So participants can submit up to five runs for each subtask. And uh, the models that they can use uh, may rely on the features we provide, but also on any external data. And uh, for the first subtask, which is a regression problem, we use uh, as evaluation uh, metrics mean square error and uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. Whereas for fear detection, here uh, we, um, the goal is to, uh, to predict uh, interval, time intervals uh, inducing fear. So uh, in this case, we use intersection over unions of time intervals. The dataset uh, we propose is uh, the Lyrisaxe dataset. It's a, a dataset we have uh, built for several years now, and uh, we, uh, we enrich the dataset every year. Uh, for the development set, we have considered uh, 44 movies uh, that are selected among a set of 160 movies that we uh, have collected, and uh, which are under Creative Commons licenses, which allows us to uh, share these movies together with the annotation we provide. So the movies uh, are amateur and professional and are uh, from several genres, like horror, comedy, drama, actions. And uh, the development sets uh, has a total duration of uh, 15 years and, uh, and 20 minutes. 
For the first task, we see which is valence and uh, result prediction, we also uh, you, uh, propose a complementary set of 10 movies for uh, around one hour. And for the test set, uh, 12 other movies have been selected from the set of 160 uh, for a total duration of uh, around nine, uh, nine hours. We also provide with uh, uh, these movies uh, a set of uh, audio features and uh, visual features. So the Laris Access dataset is a, a dataset which can be uh, downloaded from uh, the website we have here, and uh, that's the one we use uh, for the third year now. Uh, to collect the ground truth for the first subtask, uh, we have built uh, a tool uh, which is based on uh, GTrace uh, interface. Uh, and uh, the, um, the purpose is here is to, um, to uh, screen the, the movie people will watch and uh, they will uh, indicate their level of arousal and uh, valence along the movie. So uh, to do this, they use a joystick and uh, they, have, they, are, they have here uh, a scale, um, for example, here for uh, valence, which uh, pictograms that represent uh, easily understandable uh, the type of emotion from the most negative to the most positive. So with a joystick along the movie, uh, people indicate their level of valence and at another time of uh, arousal. So um, we are in total 20, uh, 28 annotators and uh, they, um, each movie has been uh, annotated from three to five annotators for valence and also for arousal. So from these uh, indiv individual uh, arousal and uh, valence signals, uh, which are in fact the induced uh, signals, we have uh, computed uh, with some post-processing a uh, mean uh, uh, valence and uh, mean arousal signal, which is uh, considered as an expected uh, valence and arousal for each movie. So that's the ground truth with values uh, ranging from minus one to plus one. For example, for valence, minus one is the most negative and plus one is the most positive. So that's for the first subtask. And for the second subtask, which is fear detection, uh, we, are, we are collaborating with uh, um, NICIM, uh, which is uh, a company uh, uh, specialized in classification of uh, audio and uh, video content. And they have uh, trained uh, members that are used to classify media. So uh, uh, for each movie, one annotator uh, has indicated for each, for each scene inducing fear, uh, the start and stop time. So this year, uh, 16 teams uh, have registered to, to our task and uh, finally uh, eight have submitted runs. So there is a uh, total of um, 48 run submissions. For the sub first subtask, uh, among these eight, seven teams are, have uh, submitted runs for a total of 30 uh, runs. And for the second subtask, four teams submitted uh, runs uh, for a total of uh, 18. So among these eight teams, uh, three are from China, wa one from Vietnam, uh, one from Greece, uh, Great Britain, one for, from South Africa, and uh, two from uh, the USA. Um, you will see uh, later in the session uh, the method for, from the different par participants, just to give an overview. Uh, participants have used visual and audio features. From the visual, uh, they have used uh, the one we, pro we provided. Uh, we try to catch uh, the um, uh, color, texture, uh, uh, properties of images. Um, participants have also uh, f uh, proposed some other uh, features, visual features, based mainly on, uh, on deep features on from CNN. And for audio features, uh, also uh, a lot of uh, participants have used the, the features we proposed, uh, which are competed from Open Smile Toolbox. But also some other features have been proposed, uh, and in particular uh, based on CNN. And uh, in some cases, feature reduction has been uh, used. And concerning the prediction models, uh, there are two types of models that have been used. Uh, some models uh, taking into account the temporal modeling and uh, some other not taking this, uh, this temporal um, effect. And among these uh, methods, there are traditional SVM, SVR for regression, 
neural networks and with temporal modeling uh, mainly uh, based on uh, LSTM but also uh, other type of uh, time modeling uh, such as gated uh, recurrent unit units. Oh. Um, so here are the results uh, that, uh, that we have computed from, from these grants. So um, valence and uh, arousal have been sorted according to uh, MSE and also uh, Pearson's correlation coefficients. Uh, for example, here um, the, the highest score has been obtained uh, from team uh, THU HCSI uh, with a zero point. Uh <laughs> Valence and uh, arousal uh, prediction from 2016 with slight variation, uh, one more time. But uh, we see that there is a positive evolution uh, concerning the scores uh, for valence, but also for arousal. And here is another representation of this evolution. And we'll see uh, for the top, uh, top three um, uh, for, for each year, uh, we see that. Uh, uh, we have a, a positive evolution, <laughs> so mainly uh, due to we will see later. But uh, on the on, on the computational computa computational models that I've proposed, but also also uh, certainly on the amount of data we provide each year because uh, we increase the the data set uh, every year. Concerning fear, uh, this is a result uh, using the intersection of over union uh, metric and. Uh, the the team MICTG uh, TJU uh, ranked best for uh, their five runs, uh, and uh, in this case uh, they have used uh, SVM. So they don't take into account the topological aspect, but they use several types of uh, of CNN of deep features. Uh, and one more time, uh, when we look at the evolution, because we proposed fear also last year, slightly differently, but we may uh, compare these two and it's slightly better. The, the increase uh, is not uh, as important as uh, for valence and arousal, but uh, it's still here. So what we have learned here is that uh, there is a positive evolution of the performance of the systems that are proposed, uh, which uh, um, um, among the modeling, what work best is uh, features ben based on uh, CNN, so deep features, uh, for visual, but also for audio, and, the, and this for the two subtasks. Concerning the first subtask, which is uh, valence or result prediction, uh, what works best is taking into account the temporal effect, uh, uh, in particular using uh, LSTM-based models, but uh, this doesn't really work for the fear. And for fear, what, what works best is uh, SVM. So there, are, there can be uh, several explanations for this. Um, Mainly the fact that uh, for, um, for fear, in fact, we have uh, much less data than for valence arousal because we have uh, um, almost uh, s uh, 30 hours of annotation for every second uh, for valence and arousal. But for, uh, for fear, for positive uh, segments, is, uh, we have rather few because uh, there are uh, a number of movies that don't have uh, uh, frightening scenes, so the positive for, for fear is, uh, is not as, um, as important as for uh, the other subtasks. So that may be a reason why uh, it's complicated to have a temporal modeling with uh, fewer uh, annotations. So we have in total now uh, around uh, 66, uh, 36 uh, hours of uh, annotations um, that may be used for <laughs> next year's. Um, there, there, there is a huge uh, range for, for improvement uh, concerning the models. Um, for example, uh, what we have seen is that CNN features work, work best, but CNN features, uh, in fact, can be applied to uh, any uh, type of computer vision program. So maybe taking into account uh, audio and visual elements that, have, that are used by movie makers, for example, to induce particular uh, emotions can be very useful. So if you can integrate this in the models, maybe it can improve the performance. And also taking into account some psychological uh, effect of emotions into the models may improve. So we are now considering what can be done for next, uh, uh, next year, if we still uh, are proposing this kind of task, and if uh, it's the case, well, in which direction we can go. 
as, as we have seen here, we consider expected emotion, so the global emotion. Maybe we can be more interested in the induced emotion, taking into account the different personal uh, properties for predicting the emotions. Thank you for attention. <laughs>